Jake, quick, hide the money! Wait, wait a sec, were those police sirens? And first of all, Kermit, what the heck did you do? Uh, I, I, I stole a dollar from a tip jar! This is Lieutenant Frank Drip. Come out with your hands up! Hello everybody, welcome back to ACR. And for new viewers, ACR stands for Action Comedy Review. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing a movie from 1988 called The Naked Gun from the Files of the Police Squad. It was directed by David Zucker and stars Leslie Nielsen as Frank Drebin. Fun fact, this movie is actually co-created by the Hot Shots director Jim Abrahams and he also co-wrote this movie and the TV show that this is based off of. The movie made about $78.8 million in the box office, but worldwide it made $140 million. It had a budget of $12 million, so that's that's actually a pretty big earn back. And wait till you see the other movies, cause uh, they got a pretty hefty amount of money to say the least. <laughs> But anyway, let's get into the review. <laughs> the movie starts out in Baru, and a bunch of leaders are forming together to make a new terrorist attack. They're trying to get their plans across to each other, but it's just not working because some of them don't like the plan and some of them do. But then one guy says that they need to make a great act of terrorism that will show that America is a weak nation. But then the man who's filling up their tea puts the kettle on the dude's hand and he burns him and then he reveals himself. And then he starts beating the crap out of them and then he washes somebody's scar off saying... I knew it. There's some soul jokes sprinkled in there that they obviously try to point out, like a hello my name is tag on some dude, and I lost 23 pounds, ask me how button. Then there's the less subtle ones, like the scar, punching a dude like a speed bag, and then a mohawk. Oh, I used to have a mohawk when I was in a group of orcs! Oh my god, how freaking old are you? So then after kicking all their butts, he decides to leave, and right before he leaves, somebody asks who he is. And his response is, I'm Lieutenant Frank Drebin. And he doesn't want to catch them in America. And then he hits his head on the door. And then it's a cool intro scene where like a car is moving around and it's a view from the top of it. And there's a few visual gags here and there, but for the most part, it's mainly focused on saying the title of the movie and the production staff members and the actors. And for some god awful reason, a car got into a house and it doesn't do any destruction, so there's that. Erwin! Erwin, Frank! Nordberg, that's a pretty tall order. You're gonna have to give me a couple of days on that one. It goes to this harbor, and this cop, played by O.J. Simpson, is sneaking around, and he's listening in on this drug deal. He goes onto the boat, and he's sneaking around, and then he finds where they're doing the drug deal. And he tries kicking open the door, but he just kicks his leg through instead, and it gives them enough time to pull out their guns, and as soon as he comes in, they all have their guns out, and he says, freeze, and put your guns down. And one of them does. As soon as he's trying to pick it up, the boss character comes in, and he tells them to kill him. Oh, my pet raccoon, he was a drug lord! But then I had to get rid of him because he stole my kidney. I remember my kidney. Uh, Miss Piggy had to sell it because, uh, she needed money for a purse. Huh. So then they fire at him, and the poor guy has the funniest near-death scene, because he goes back, hits his head on a metal pipe, then he puts his hand on a furnace, he leans on wet paint, gets his hand slammed on by a window, falls into wedding cake, and steps on a bear trap. Then he finally falls into the water. <laughs> poor, poor guy. Oh, at least he didn't die the way I did. Oh yeah, how exactly did you die again? A magician never reveals his secrets, Jake. Uh-huh. 
It then goes to an airport and Frank's getting off a plane, but looks like he has some fans. In the crowd is one of Frank's fellow members of police squad, Ed Hawken. Frank turns down some flowers and he goes to talk with Ed. He then goes on to talk about a lady called Victoria and how she ran off with a guy and he was doing all this for her and it's meaningless now. And then he goes to the podium there and he starts telling the crowd that Sure, he may be the hero, but men can be hurt too. But Ed interrupts and he tells him that they're here for Weird Al Yankovic, not him. They hop into the car and they drive off to the hospital where Nordberg is, who's the guy from the boat. And then Ed says this. Hi, Frank, though he's on life support. Doctors say he's got a 50-50 chance of living. Though there's only a 10% chance of that. I already hate this movie. They arrive at the hospital and with a lot of luggage. Then they go to meet up with Nordberg and his wife. Then this happens. Me, Frank, your buddy. Nordberg tries to tell them what happened and who's behind all of this, but it just leads to a bunch of misunderstandings. Then they get a photo of the boat that Nordberg was investigating from his wife. Frank wants every man on this, but turns out Queen Elizabeth is coming to America and they're gonna be short on men. Frank promises Nordberg's wife that no man will rest until this case is cracked. But then he says, let's go get some lunch. I'll make a note of that in my report. My pleasure. Frank goes to this conference where they're being asked about Queen Elizabeth coming to America and how they're gonna deal with it. Frank does a little speech and he goes to the bathroom with his mic on and you can hear him pissing and humming while the conference is going on. Ed and Frank go to the wharf where Nordberg was found and Frank hits somebody off the dock. Wow, this guy really freaking sucks at driving. This is like a third time he's hit something. Frank goes off to look around and he finds a man at the dock house. He asks him if he's seen Nordberg before and he shows him a picture of him but he's gotta he's gotta jog his memory so there's a little bribing involved and it's just a little back and forth between the two and he gets the information he needs which leads him to Ludwig's shipment. Frank meets up with Ludwig and he questions him and then Frank accidentally kills his fish with a pen and it also seems that Ludwig is concerned that Nordberg survived. Ludwig calls his secretary, Miss Spencer, over to help him find the file he needs, and Frank gets the file, he leaves, and Ludwig tells Miss Spencer to get to know Frank a little better, and it seems like we know who the villain is now. Ah uh, yeah, he showed up in the boat scene, you idiot. Frank heads back to police squad to see the report on Nordberg's jacket. Then his car starts driving by itself after the airbags went off and he starts shooting at it and it blows up but it still drives away and he's trying to get it to stop acting like there's somebody in there and it just causes this whole commotion and then he acts in charge and he obviously freaking knows what he did too. Ted, the scientist who's running the reports, shows off some of the things he's made, like an anti-spray paint wall that fires back when sprayed on, the Swiss army shoe, then these cufflinks that shoot a little needle-sized dart, and it knocks out the opponent for a few minutes. Then he tries it on Ed. He gives him the frank, and he shows the lab sample on Nordberg's jacket, and it seems like Nordberg is a part of this whole drug deal thing, and Ed tells Frank that he has 24 hours to prove that he's innocent. It goes back to Ludwig and he's meeting up with Papschmier. Then they talk business. Ludwig shows off his secret assassin that he got for this deal he's making with Papschmier. It's his secretary, but she's an assassin, but also she doesn't know she's an assassin. Oh, I was an assassin once, but my father broke my thumb off when he figured out I was! <laughs> what the heck is wrong with you? The secretary freaks him out with an unloaded gun and she's trying to fire it at him. And then Ludwig reveals that it's a type of hypnotism. Frank heads back to the hospital to check up on Nordberg, but it turns out his doctor was one of these assassins. Frank and him fight a bit and it turns into this chase scene after Nordberg gets hurt 
a bit. <laughs> Doctor steals a car and Frank hops into a student driver car. Frank and the instructor are telling the student what to do and Frank's shooting at the doctor's car. <laughs> they go down a one-way street and almost get flattened by a truck driver and the instructor tells the student to flip him the bird. The student steps on the gas, they're chasing after the doctor once again, but this time he drives into a gas truck and then he drives into an army vehicle that has a missile on it and he's stuck on the army vehicle that goes into a fireworks shop and then it blows up. So that's fun. And then now it's night and Frank's monologuing where he is and what he knows so far. Uh, how many times a day do you monologue, Jake? Kermit, wrong person. That's Pablo. <laughs> Uh, uh, how, what? You want my eyes? Oh, wait, I don't have any. Frank heads back to his apartment, and he sees that his door's open a bit. So he starts sneaking around and hopping around his house. And then he finds Miss Spencer in the kitchen, and she's making dinner. He slips into something a little more comfortable, but it's just another suit. Frank brings up the photo of the boat that Nordberg had and why it wasn't in Ludwig's files. Frank and Miss Spencer talk a little bit more than they do it in full body condoms. And then they have this whole montage where they're doing happy stuff. Woohoo! But then they have to say their goodbyes because Frank has to go on a stakeout. Careful. You get a good night's sleep. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Frank and Ed are at the stakeout area, and Frank heads into Ludwig's office where they're staking out, and he starts to look around for any sort of clue to prove that he actually did something. And then, uh, this happens. Bingo. And then he finds a piece of paper under a house of cards, and bam, magic. He moved it out of the bottom without even knocking the cards down. Then he reads it. Turns out the letter was for the deal that Papschmier and Ludwig made to kill the Queen of England when she arrived. He's putting a lighter up to it to see it in the dark, and he accidentally sets it on fire, which then sets the rest of the office on fire, and he breaks all the priceless stuff that Ludwig has. And can't get any worse from there, but it does, because turns out Ludwig is coming right back into the building. So Frank goes out the window, and it gets much worse from there. Ah, uh, Jane, don't skip this part. It gets really good here. I mean, I left this out of the movie for a reason. Frank gets scolded, and he goes back to his apartment, and Miss Spencer shows up. He tries to tell her that Ludwig's up to no good, but she doesn't believe him, and she tells him otherwise. And she also tells him that... Ludwig wants to meet up with him somewhere at a certain time. She says she has to leave because she's meeting up with Ludwig. So then during the night, Frank heads over to the location that Ludwig wanted to meet up. And then his goon tries to murder Frank. But that backfires and Frank ends up killing the goon. So it heads to the party for the queen and Ed sends out a bunch of police squad members and he tells them to see if there's any suspicious people around. Frank shows up and Ed's confused because he's not supposed to be here because he was banned from going to the party tonight. And Frank tells him what happened with Ludwig's goon, but then they beat up some random dude. Oh, I did that once. Let's just say the government doesn't like me too much. <sighs> Frank confronts Ludwig and he tells Frank that he needs proof to show that he's doing something wrong. And then he storms off all mad. Miss Spencer asks Frank what's wrong, then Frank breaks up with her. The Queen finally arrives, and apparently Ludwig was supposed to give her a vintage musket, and Frank gets disoriented by some horns, and he thinks that Ludwig's about to shoot her, so then he tackles the Queen, and he gets kicked off the force the next day. Miss Spencer shows up at the office, and she tells him that he was right about Ludwig, and he's gonna have the Queen assassinated at the baseball game that's happening today. And it's not gonna be Ludwig who kills her, but it's going to be one of the baseball players. All the men on the force agree to go, and Ed says it's because they want to get Frank back on the force. Whoops. Sorry, fellas. 
Frank and all the other members of Police Squad are at the baseball game, and Frank wants to go arrest Ludwig right away, but they have to wait for the right opportunity. Frank sneaks around and finds Enrico Palazzo, who's an opera singer, and he's complaining about his usher being really late. Ooh, that reminds me of my friend Mumei! He was a proud opera singer. Oh, I loved him. He was the best. Frank sees this as an opportunity to get onto the field, so he knocks out Enrico, and he has to take his place now. But then he has to sing the national anthem. And let's just say he does a decent job. They figure out it's not actually Enrico, then the security chases after Frank. Frank runs around and he finds a bat, and then he pulls an umpire off to the side, and he does this. Uh, could you tell me, is this an official bat? Frank gets onto the field again, and he's in his disguise, and then he's checking all the players. <laughs> And then he checks the pitcher, and he totally doesn't have stuff for cheating. And then it's just this whole montage of him checking and trying to find the killer. The montage ends, and Frank has to prevent the third out from happening, and he does everything within his power to cause a huge commotion. As soon as the third out is confirmed, Ludwig initiates the kill switch on one of the players to kill the queen. Frank runs after the killer, and he tackles him. Then all the players start fighting and tackling each other, and they just get caught in the middle of this while Ludwig is escaping. The killer gets gets up and he continues his mission and Frank chases after him again. Frank uses the cufflink dart, but then it misses and it hits a lady at the top of the stadium and she falls down on the killer. Frank reveals that he was the umpire, chases after Ludwig with Ed and it turns out that Ludwig kidnapped Miss Spencer to hold her as a hostage. Ludwig has Miss Spencer at gunpoint and she bites his hand which makes him drop the gun and then Frank fires the final dart at him and then he falls off the stadium then he gets ran over by a bus a road roller and then he gets stomped on by a marching band it turns out that miss spencer also got hypnotized and this time she's a killer for frank she holds him up at gunpoint and frank's trying to get her to remember everything to snap out of it then he tells her that he was gonna propose to her after the ball game and she finally snaps out of it. Everybody's watching cause cameras pointed at him and then they all start crying and hugging each other. Oh, this reminds me of that time I married a rat named Ratina. Oh, you are a good rat, Ratina. It's great, Pablo. Good for you. Frank gets his job back from the mayor. Nordberg shows up in a wheelchair and he thanks him and he's gonna be back on the force in about a week. Then he falls down the stairs in a wheelchair and then flies into the field. <laughs> and then the credits roll and there's some meta jokes in there but way too many to show here. Let's see. I give the naked gun from the files of the police squad eight francs out of ten. Wow! At some points the jokes fell flat because they were either overused or they just weren't funny. But what are you gonna do? Nevertheless, I still like the movie. The characters are great, a lot of the jokes are great, and if you were looking for a movie like this, I'd definitely recommend it to you. It was definitely a plot-focused movie, unlike some of the other movies on this channel that I've reviewed. Cough, cough, Kung Pao. St but anyway, that's just my opinion. Tell me what you think of the movie in the comment section below, if you have seen it, or if you're going to see it. Give me any feedback, too. It really helps out the channel. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, follow me on my social media pages. But anyway, have a good one everyone. See you next time in my review of The Naked Gun, Two and a Half, The Smell of Fear. See ya.